Snowmobiles have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Every winter we'd uh, suit up and go, go trail riding and I've had my fair share of bumps and bruises and broken bones and the kind of the thing that comes with snowmobiles. Come on, boys. Hey, Ranger. Did you go for a ride? Over the years of racing, like, there's been times where you know something's not right. And it, you know, it's the sixth sense or whatever it may be. But, uh, you know, that weekend, you know, things weren't clicking. We get about halfway through the race. I hit a hole funny and my sled started swapping side to side. I couldn't ride out of it. And it pitched me off to the left side. Feet impact the ground and my left knee buckles 180 degrees. It's unbearable pain. And my foot is actually laying on top of my chest. I finally got to Duluth Hospital and my family comes in the room and the doctor follows and he explained to me that we're having circulation problems. He thought it was best course of action to amputate my leg just above the knee. He's like, in order for you to survive at this point, we're gonna need to take your leg. And uh, I was in surgery about an hour later and they removed my leg about three inches above the knee joint. It was a total of 13 days at the hospital to recover. A couple weeks after I got home, I had meetings with my prosthetist uh, to get a game plan on the equipment that I was gonna use to walk around on. Five and a half weeks after the injury happened, I went to the appointment with my prosthetist to actually put on my leg for the first time. Feeling whole again watching my feet go in front of me as I'm walking across the room. I mean, it, it, it feels good. Like, I feel normal. I just need a few extra nuts and bolts now to get around. <laughs> Immediately after it, I, I wanted nothing to do with the bikes and snowmobiles. But that kind of faded away as it usually does after an injury. And, you know, I made up an excuse. I was going to go get the mail, so. <laughs> So I hopped on my snowmobile and, and went for a little cruise and, and you know, it made me smile to get out and, you know, smell that two-stroke smoke. It, it felt normal for me. And I knew right away that the leg I was set up with wasn't gonna work for riding. But what really motivated me to think into it deeper was uh, finding out about the Summer X Games Adaptive Supercross. And this is a supercross race for amputees and paraplegics. Oh, dang, I got a chance to compete at Summer X Games. From what I gathered, all the other riders were just using, you know, their everyday equipment. There's no real specialized, high-impact prosthetic equipment that anybody was using for motocross. And I'm like, huh, well, I think I can fix this. So I leaned back on my ninth grade drafting experience and my pencil, paper, and protractor and ruler. I think about my mountain bike and this small, lightweight, Fox shock that's in there and you know I'm like that's perfect you know space wise to put in my knee then the next phase was to start cutting metal parts for the last part I assembled everything and went over to my dirt bike and went for that first ride and instantly you know within 100 yards of riding down the trail I knew that uh, this is going to work good so the Moto Knee and now our new VersaFoot 2 are made out of 6061 aluminum. We're using stainless steel fasteners for use around mud and water. The cool thing about it is it's modular. I mean, all the prosthetic industry uses modular. So you can mix and match different components on the other. So this is one of the main components of this whole system. It's the Fox mountain bike shock. It uses compressed air inside here, as well as hydraulic oil in here. We can close it all, and then it just takes a lot of pressure to push the oil through the little piston inside here, which slows everything down. Then compare that to having it all open. Just real fast and springy. Right away when I started designing the Moto Knee, I, I knew I wanted to be versatile for a lot of different sports and activities. So I tested it with motocross, mountain biking, road biking, wakeboarding, uh, horseback riding, snowboarding, skiing. Adaptation to me means using tools to bridge a gap. 
reason or motivation for me to start the Moto Knee project was to get back on my motocross bike. And through that whole summer, going to these different adaptive races, I got to meet all these other adaptive athletes and amputees, and nobody had the right equipment for what we were doing. And you know, here I am, I've got this Moto Knee project. I built it for myself to get myself back into action. But I realized that there's a need for this kind of stuff that I was working on. And, and you know, the wheel started turning like, I'm like, well, maybe I could develop this Moto Knee into a production piece and start a company around it. And uh, early in 2010, we started BioAdapt officially. Having something work for myself so I can achieve my goals is one thing, but being able to create something to help other people get back into action doing something that they thought they couldn't do, I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty special. I've been very successful as an athlete in multiple sports. I'm a nine-time X Games gold medalist between snowcross, motocross, and snow bikes. I'm a Paralympic gold and silver medalist in snowboarding events. I think the biggest highlight with my company BioAdapt has got to be from the 2018 Paralympic Games. We had nine athletes on the podium that brought home a total of 11 medals. Being able to adapt either mentally or physically to something is what sets people apart from others. Like, of, of course I didn't want them to amputate my leg, but like the bigger picture of it was, I understood it was gonna save my life. Hey Warren, you got your stopwatch ready? And your clipboard, oh, I gotta get you your clipboard. So many people ask me along the way, why, why in the world did you want to get back on your snowmobile after you'd just been injured and almost died? And, and most people don't understand it, but the, the people who've been in that position before, you know, they know how much work and effort goes into it, the roller coaster of emotions that it gives them, and the highs of highs and lows of lows. And, you know, knowing what it feels like when you accomplish that goal or when you're on top, I mean, that over exceeds anything else. It's been, it's been a wild ride. It's been quite an adventure and being able to share that with my family and my five-year-old daughter, Lauren, I mean, I just think of the influence that I'm leaving on her as well as all these other athletes and incredible individuals that we meet along the way. She's gonna grow up as such a strong person and uh, she'll know that you're capable of anything you wanna be. You just gotta go after it. <laughs>